2020 has been a tough year for Nashville. Started back in March with the devastating tornadoes that we had that tore through some of our neighborhoods. Continued through the pandemic and the events of this past summer. And now this, the cowardly bombing on Christmas morning right here in the heart of our downtown. But one thing I've learned about Nashvillians in the time I've lived here is that they're tough and we stick together as a, as a team and that's what we're doing now. And I want you to know that's the team that's behind me and the folks that they represent are doing everything we can to find out what happened here, to get the answers that you deserve and to make sure that we're all safe. So one of the toughest groups of folks we've got here in Middle Tennessee is our law enforcement and first responders. And nowhere in my experience in law enforcement has that ever been plainer to me than what happened early yesterday morning. 615, 620, or 630 or so on Christmas morning, Metro Nashville police officers just a number of blocks north of here uh, didn't run away from danger, literally ran to danger. Vehicle that was announcing that it was going to blow up and Metro Nashville police officers, instead of heading in the other direction, headed towards that. They evacuated that area, got all the citizens out of there. Uh, I'm quite confident that their actions are part of the reason why there was less cost of life in this heinous act. Starting yesterday morning, we had a task force came together. It, it, it isn't a one-time thing. This is what we do all the time. In the U.S. Attorney's Office, we work together with our federal partners, our state partners, and our local partners. And that's what immediately started happening yesterday. Teams of agents, you know, grouped together uh, across agencies, started handling leads that citizens, our citizens, were calling in. We've had over 500 leads and tips come in. Uh, and every single one of those is being followed up by a team of investigators. Uh, that's the stage we're at in this investigation. We are still continuing to follow every lead that we have, uh, and we will continue to do so until we find out what's happened. We also have national resources here. The Department of Justice, uh, the Acting Attorney General has told me any resources we need, we can have. The FBI and the ATF have sent their most specialized bomb technicians here to Nashville. And as we speak, they are north of here a number of blocks at a, at a massive crime scene uh, doing what they do and doing, frankly, what they do better than anyone else in the world. Uh, and it's quite a challenge. Having been up there and seen that scene, uh, it's like uh, a giant jigsaw puzzle created by a bomb that throws pieces of evidence across multiple city blocks. And they've got to gather it, they've got to catalog it, they've got to put it back together and try to find out what the picture of that puzzle looks like. Uh, but there's no one better to do it than the folks we've got on the ground here in Nashville, Tennessee right now. So that's going on as we speak. The investigations of the leads is going on as we speak. Uh, I am confident in the team we have that we will get to the bottom of this, that we will find out the story of this individual or individuals, we don't know right now, but this, uh, this, this ultimate Scrooge who on Christmas morning, instead of spreading joy and cheer, decided to spread devastation and destruction. But we know how that story ends here in Nashville. We're going to stand together. We're going to get back on our feet. We're going to get our businesses back up and running. We're going to get our infrastructure and the cell coverage back up and running because that's what we do in Nashville. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you, Attorney Cochran, and to everyone, let me reiterate that Nashville is safe. Uh, we feel and know uh, that we have no known threats at this time against our city. Uh, we've been in communication and feel pretty good about that. We have really ramped up our efforts with several hundred of our federal partners here from the FBI and the ATF, as well as uh, state, local, which is the TBI and the Tennessee Highway Patrol and others. Uh, we're totally thankful for their efforts. To our business owners downtown, know that the federal government is conducting this investigation, and as they uh, go through the crime scene, they'll try to reduce that as quickly as possible to where we can try to get you back in your businesses as soon as possible. But we ask that you be patient. Uh, there's about 40 uh, buildings that's been impacted, and uh, so those buildings will have to be cleared through our codes. Uh, if you have any information uh, pertaining to this, uh, please contact 615-74-CRIME. Uh, or fbi.gov slash Nashville. Thank you.
My name is Doug Korneski, and I'm the special agent in charge of the Memphis Field Office, which covers Nashville. The FBI, the ATF, uh, Metro Nashville uh, Police Department officers, and Tennessee Highway Patrol, and other federal and state partners are working around the clock to make sure Nashville continues to be a safe place to live and work. During the past 24 hours, our joint investigative team fielded nearly 500 tips from those in and around the Nashville metro area. We deeply appreciate the ongoing support and cooperation from the community and wish for it to continue. The first thing I want to reiterate that Chief Drake indicated is that there we have no indication of additional explosive threats. No other explosive devices were discovered during the area uh, during our secondary sweep yesterday. We've also increased our footprint to work as quickly but thoroughly as possible. There are approximately 250 FBI agents, analysts, and professional staff from at least eight surrounding field offices and FBI headquarters. They're working shoulder to shoulder with our partners. Our team is addressing this case on several fronts. First, our investigative team is turning over every stone to make sure um, we know as many details as possible to answer the question of who is responsible for this and also to understand why did they do this. This includes assistance currently from our behavioral analysis unit back at Quantico. Secondly, our evidence response teams are committed to documenting and collecting all of the evidence to support the facts learned by the investigative team. We know this affects local businesses and are committed to processing the scene in a timely but thorough way. We are starting from the outermost perimeter of the crime scene and working our way inward. We hope to have the outer area complete and turn over to the city of Nashville within the next day or so so that they can conduct the necessary inspections. Again, I want to thank the citizens of Nashville for their trust in the FBI and our federal and state and local partners and also for the cooperation of all of our partners who stand here today with me. Thank you. Good afternoon. My name is Mickey French. I'm the special agent in charge for the Nashville Field Division. Uh, ATF has uh, numerous personnel here in, on the ground working seamlessly with all the agencies uh, represented. Specifically, we have the National Response Team. ATF's National Response Team is the only accredited forensic uh, investigative team in the country. They're outstanding at what they work, they do. Uh, they're made up of certified explosive specialists, bomb technicians, forensic chemists, uh, engineers, and we have integrated and working seamlessly with the Metro Nashville Police Department as well as the FBI and all agencies involved. Uh, just to reiterate what everybody has said before me, uh, we've had over 500 leads and tips, and our job as a law enforcement agency is to make sure that this community is safe. And we are making sure that we're following through with each and every one of these tips and leads, seamlessly integrated uh, with, with no effort at all uh, and no impact, uh, hopefully keeping the community safe. Thank you. At this time, we can uh, answer a few questions. Remindful that we, we can't really get into too much details of the investigation. We know you have questions and information, but we'll attempt to take a few at this time. So uh, we can't confirm any um, individuals or anybody we've identified. Again, as we've mentioned, we have over 500 investigative leads, and we're following up on every one of those. So there are a number of individuals that we're looking at. So at this point, we're not prepared to identify any single individual. At this point, we don't have any indication that we are looking for another um, subject. But again, there's uh, 500 leads we're running through, so there's all kinds of individuals we're looking for. That is something we're uh, vigorously working on right now. So. We do not know at this point, but we're working under that assumption and processing as such. 
We do not know that. We, again, we're following up every investigative lead, uh, although we do believe there are currently no active threats. This seems so, this seems so absolutely random, out of nowhere, that an RV would have an announcement warning of an explosion and then it would happen. Um, what kind of a person would do this and how confident are you to be able to find them and find out why? So I can't answer what kind of person. Again, we're engaging with our behavioral analysis unit uh, back at Quantico. They are experts in this area, so we hope to get some answers through them. Um, I'm sorry, what's the second part? And, and how confident then are you that you will be able to find the person and, and then find out why they did this? I am fairly confident we will be able to uh, identify an individual or uh, ascertain what has occurred. We just, it's going to take us some time, but this team behind me and, and my folks and our folks in the field uh, we're very good at what we do. Sir, can you just repeat, I guess because I misheard you, so you're working on the assumption that the, the human remains, whatever was found that that was the person that We are not working on any assumptions. We are addressing it to rule it out or to identify it. Do you know if this person or... Excuse me? I cannot comment on that. I, what I can say is, is just confirm we do have some activity going on in that area. That's a better question for the mayor. Let's uh, let him say a few words. Okay. Is there any belief that the target was the at t building? Is that something you're investigating, whether or not to knock out some of this communication? We're looking at every possible uh, motive uh, that could could be uh, involved. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. I'm going to have uh, Mayor Cooper. He wants to address the uh, public now, and I think he's going to have a few words here. Mayor? Thank you. I'll be very brief. I think I uh, wanted, I'm grateful to the team behind us. Um, and Nashville's depending on them to do a great job. And our resolve as a community to both rebuild second and to find the culprit is, uh, is very great. I want to introduce, I want to thank them. This is several hundred agents. This is our national best stepping forward to help us solve this crime. But also locally, our EMTs, our firemen, our police officers who've been so heroic in this last few days. I want to ask uh, the Chief Swan, I heard the question about communications. To, I know he's been in close touch with AT&T and our, our network communications to answer that question about outages and what we can expect going forward. But I want to thank the team behind me, count on them to deliver for us in Nashville and then our own city to commit to rebuilding. And I'm grateful to Governor Lee's request to the White House today to have a national uh, emergency and to get federal help uh, for rebuilding Second Avenue once that work begins. One other thing is we still have a curfew in Nashville and will until tomorrow afternoon. This is an active crime scene. I would encourage people not to come to downtown Nashville until that curfew is lifted and let the FBI and our federal partners do that work. But with that, let me introduce Chief Swan to talk about communications. Uh, good afternoon. Um, again, not to reiterate, but I think it's important to, to just note our, our role right now uh, in the city is to make sure that we are working closely with our partners, uh, law enforcement partners, to ensure that anything that they need logistics, logistic wise, we, we, we'll provide it for them. And as far as the uh, telecommunication partners, we're working closely with them, AT&T, to ensure that we can get communication established back safely. Uh, they're here to work 24 hours. Um, it is a big operation with the building itself. Where we're trying to at least get the generators back in order so that the uh, mobile phones will be back into uh, operation. And then we're hoping within the next day, or if we're fortunate, it may take one or two days to get everything back online. But they're here to work with, the, uh, with us, and we're hopefully hopeful that we'll get that back established. Uh, one thing to remember, I know Chief Drake had mentioned, that even though we had this incident took place, the city still has to go on. We still have to make sure that all emergencies are met. Um, the city is safe as far as doing our regular duties. So that's why we're happy that we do have our federal partners here. So again, we thank everybody and ask for the partners, um, or, or actually the patients of Nashville. Um, the partnership downtown as far as business owners and also 
uh, residence owners. We are working to make sure that all water is turned off, Second Avenue, and then also we're turning the um, electricity off as well to ensure that the safety of people going in and out of the buildings for investigation purposes. So thank you. Oh yeah, absolutely. Our officers responded to a shots fired call and had didn't have any idea what else was going on. It's a typical police call. And as they arrived, uh, they saw an RV uh, that was giving out a message saying it would detonate within 15 minutes, a countdown would go, music would play. And instead of uh, taking it as just uh, maybe a threat and calling in and getting resources, they immediately began knocking on doors. They coordinated the resources to get everyone evacuated and out. And had they not done that, uh, in fact, I watched a, a short video of an officer that had just moved out of the video frame when the explosion occurred and knocked him to the ground. Uh, so had they not done that, we'd be talking about uh, people as well with, you know, with the destruction that we have. So they're just heroic efforts in saving lives. as quick as you can, get as many people out as quickly as we could, safely, and get them to somewhere safe and then provide them with services so, you know, they're not displaced. Have you had a chance to talk with them personally? I didn't hear you. Have you had a chance to talk with your officers personally? I have. I talked to each one of those at the scene, uh, thanked them for the efforts, and uh, they were uh, really didn't want the thanks. They just felt that it was their job and it was their honor to be able to serve our city. You know, it's a proud moment when we have our law enforcement professionals that are selfless like that. They're not concerned about their own safety, but the safety of our city. Uh, we all, we love our city. We're invested in it. And it just made me feel good to know that they made the right decision in saving lives and, and didn't worry about themselves as much. It felt really good. The, the announcement, I can't give you verbatim, was just saying there would be a detonation within 15 minutes. Music would play, and then it would say there'd be a detonation in 14 minutes. So it was a countdown going. And so they began immediately evacuating, uh, not knowing what we had. We called for our hazardous device units to uh, respond, and just at that time, it detonated. So.